Hey guys, today I have an EcoFlow River 2 portable power station. We're going to be taking it apart to see how it's built and what kind of cells are inside. I've had this for about two years now. They are still selling the River 2, but it is an old model at this point. The River 2 has a 256 watt hour battery and a 600 watt inverter. And this power station has been fully discharged prior to uh, disassembly here. You can see it's at 0% state of charge. We'll start by popping off the four screw covers on the top to access the number two Phillips screws. And I believe this should simply pry apart here. It looks loose already. Yep, there we go. So this board is the main charger and inverter. On the top, we have our cooling fan. This is going to be our AC input. We have an inductor and we also have a ground. Now I point out the fact that we have a ground because the original EcoFlow River did not. So like I said, we have an inductor. We've got a couple of transformers. We've got a large capacitor here. This is likely a switch mode power supply. I believe the left side is the inverter circuit where it's converting the DC back to AC. Here's a closer look at the front panel connectors. We're gonna pull most of this stuff out here, but I wanted you to see how it's positioned in the case before we start removing things. We can go ahead and disconnect the fan and this whole assembly slides out in one piece. For the front display panel, we have a communications connector here. We have this little knife terminal that's the positive supply for the car accessory port. We have this very thin cable for the LCD display. Uh, it looks like maybe you flip it out. Yep, there you go. We also have to disconnect our AC output and remove the Phillips screw for the grounding conductor. Now this was discharged a few days ago, but I still don't know what voltage may be present on some of these capacitors here. Uh, and I am not interested in getting shocked. So I'm just going to use some insulative gloves here and use caution while removing this. Okay. Let's take a quick look at this front panel here. As I mentioned, there's not really a whole lot to see. These two knife terminals are where the DC power is coming into this board. We have an inductor here, which I believe is part of the uh, voltage regulating circuit for the USB ports. And on the left here, we have the AC output. Again, the ground conductor is going to the top receptacle and the bottom receptacle here is ungrounded. It's simply a line and a neutral connector. Here's just a quick look at the front connectors. This is the uh, car accessory port. We have two USB A's and then we have our USB C. And we do have some fairly heavy solder traces here, which is good to see as well. So under this inverter board, there are two large metal standoffs and that's where the battery power is being passed from the uh, battery circuit down here, the BMS up to the top inverter board. And both the positive and the negative go to these two knife terminals in the front, which is where the front display was connected. And I did do a quick check with my multimeter here and there is no voltage present on these terminals. So I do believe the BMS has actually shut off here. There's a small connector that needs pulled off here on the left. And then I should be able to simply lift this board out. There's not a whole lot else on this board that we haven't already talked about, but one thing I did see is uh, this is the XT60 input here labeled PV plus and PV minus. And uh, that power is being passed to this inductor right here. So this is going to be the charge controller. Uh, whether it's MPPT or PWM, I am not sure of. So here's the BMS for our battery. And I know it probably isn't, but it just looks a lot simpler than I was expecting. Uh, so we have our main positive and main negative power standoffs here. Uh, this is the B plus, our main positive from the battery. This is the B minus, our main negative from the battery. And then we have balance connections located here, here, and here for each of the cells. It does look like there are four cells down in there and they are cylindrical and those are quite large cells. So it'll be interesting to see what they are when we actually pull this board apart. I do see there are two temperature sensors located right here, which are going down into the, into the battery there. And uh, this just appears to be a communications cable between this BMS and the actual inverter control board. There are four Phillips screws located here, 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 and here. Before we pull this out, let's do a quick voltage check of our cells. So the main positive to the main negative, we have 11.26 volts. Uh, so this is going to be a 12.8 volt nominal battery. We know it's lithium iron phosphate. We know there are four cells at 3.2 volts per cell. That is 12.8 volts nominal. So our first cell is 2.68 volts. The second is 2.89 volts. The third is 2.86 volts. And the fourth is 2.80 volts. Uh, so they're not perfectly balanced, but they are balanced within reason. Got our empty case here, set that aside now. All right, so I'm not seeing any markings on the cells themselves, but uh, it does appear there's a QR code on the top under the plastic there. So we might actually disassemble this battery pack completely. And there does appear to be a high current fuse on this board. So this says 80 amps, 75 volts DC. 
and that is isolating the positive coming off the battery from the entire rest of the circuit. So also looking at these cell connections here, they are laser welded in place. The laser welds look very nicely done. Uh, then we have a strip here spot welded to the aluminum bus bar. I assume this is just some standard nickel strip and that's just being used to balance these cells. With the balance leads removed, I should be able to fold this up. All right, and then this should come apart, I believe. They welded the bus bar over top of the plastic. So uh, the only way to get these cells out is to either cut the bus bar or cut the plastic. As you can see, I was able to successfully remove the bus bars there. And uh, these are very thin bus bars, actually. 0.44 millimeters in thickness. Remove the case nicely. And here's the best part, in my opinion, is a look at the actual cells. All right, so these cells do have some sort of QR code here. There's a QR code on both ends. They are all different. So I've got two cells here and I've got four different QR codes. They're probably some sort of serial number. There's nothing I can find on here that looks like a model number. Uh, so they are 40 millimeters in thickness. Uh, so we'll call this a 4130. It's probably 130 millimeters there, but obviously I don't want to put this on it uh, because that's going to short out the cell. After investigating this a little bit further, I've been able to determine that these are in fact Eve brand cells. So under the shrink wrap here, we have another QR code, which is the actual QR code for the cell. So these are Eve brand cells. We can see it begins with 02Y, and I am fairly confident these are model C40 specifically. And based on the data sheet here, what I find most interesting is the cycle life of these cells. At 45 degrees Celsius and a 100% depth of discharge, they're rated for 1000 cycles. At 25 degrees Celsius and a 90% depth of discharge, they're rated at 3,500 cycles. So that's an incredible difference. And 25C is around 77 Fahrenheit. Uh, it's pretty much room temperature, maybe slightly above room temperature. I think that's about all there is to see. If you found this interesting, please hit that like button before you go. And if you want to see more power station teardowns, please let me know that as well down in the comment section. I find these to be very fun and I have at least one more on the way. I've got another one set aside from uh, Blue Eddy, but I might pick up some more if you guys want to see more power station teardowns. So please let me know what you guys think of this type of content. And thanks for watching.